Welcome to Make and Decorate, a podcast for makers who love to sew, quilt, and decorate. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Make and Decorate podcast. This is season four, episode 84. I'm Stephanie, your host, and today's topic is all about Liberty Fabrics, a little history of Liberty Fabrics, the different types of Liberty Fabrics, and ideas for using them in your projects. But first, I want to give a big thank you to Emanuela from the Quilt Carousel podcast, the German podcast, and her listeners who listened and sent the nicest comments about that episode. Uh, her listeners just love her to death and um, just had the greatest things to say about her and about this episode because they were able to learn a bit more about her, which is why I do like to interview uh, other podcasters and YouTubers because it shines the light on them because they are shining the light on their guests when they interview them. And, you know, there's some things that um, that uh, can be learned when they are interviewed, right? And as always, to my listeners, thank you for listening. You are truly the best and I am so thankful for all of you that, uh, I want to say tune in, that's kind of an old term, but you do tune in to the, to the podcast every episode. So thank you so much. All right. So I thought I received another voicemail, but when I listened to it a couple times, it wasn't intended for me, which was very odd because you have to click on the leave a voice or send a voicemail tab button on my podcast blog page. I'm not quite sure, but, um, and it wasn't a spam or anything. It was a truly a message, but it was for someone, uh, someone else who uh, is a YouTuber that I know. So I'm forwarded that message on to her so that she can hear um, the um, nice comment that her viewer um, intended to, to send her. <laughs> Also, I, I want to say, too, that if you do leave a voice message, turn down any TV or music that you have in the background because the microphone picks that up and it competes with your voice. And it's very hard to remove the background uh, from the voice. I've tried it a couple times and uh, it just doesn't always work very well. Uh, depending upon how loud the the background noise is recorded. So that's just a little tip. And uh, just uh, remember to do that. Send me a message. It can be a comment um, and it can be a question, questions about the episode, about guests, about um, sewing, quilting, decorating, anything. So be sure to send me a voicemail. I'll play it on the show. If you don't want me to play it on the show and you just want me to mention it and give it a shout out, I'll do that as well. You just have to say so in the voice message. I want to share another query I received via email from a listener. She had a design question about updating her wall and carpet color. She currently has yellow walls and still loves the color. She's got dark blue wall-to-wall -wall carpeting and beautifully custom-made and installed valances above the windows. She, um, now this could be a common um, kind of a issue when you are currently in a house, but you want to update it, but you're not quite sure how long you're going to be there. And so you you want to limit the amount of investment that you put in to redecorating it. So that's kind of the, um, the issue with this uh, question. And there's definitely ways to do that. And absolutely, wall color is the most 
um, dramatic improvement and um, noticeable change you can make for a low investment cost. One of the things she said, though, was that she was told that the yellow wall color was outdated. And I know that color palettes and schemes can get dated after a while. Uh, and that is only because, you know, something else has trended in uh, in its place. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it is not um classic and always um, always never goes out of style, just like the Audrey Hepburn dress. That, that is always in style, no matter what decade you're in. And with classic colors, that holds true as well. There is a classic yellow color tone and shade that you can use um, that, that has that classic um, timeless look about it. And some of those colors I'll mention to you in the podcast here. Uh, but I will also say that color is back in a big way now. It is just coming back in spades, <laughs> which is so happy. I, I'm really happy about it. Uh, and sage green is back. It is all about sage green right now, which it just makes me laugh because... Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, sage green was the color. Everybody was doing the sage green. And uh, I was specifying it all the time. I loved that color. I still like the color. Uh, and it, it has since kind of faded. And then more of the spa, blue spa greens were coming in. And then all color um, just App went absent for a long time and it was all about grays and it still kind of is a lot about grays but um, you will see color in being brought back in a huge way right now you'll see it in the shelter magazines you'll see it on decorating shows you'll see it in home deck um, products so look out for that it's so exciting and don't be afraid of color it's great. And if you don't want to commit long term to color, then use it for pillows, use it for things that are not a huge investment, um, like big sofas and draperies, but use it maybe on a small chair, upholstery, pillows, that sort of thing that you could easily change out in a few years if you wanted to. So it's it's funny because it's so similar with fashion as well, because now <laughs> fashion is repeating 90s fashion all over again. Uh, and I don't know, it's kind of funny when you've already lived through it. And I have worn 90s fashion in the 90s. Uh, and it's interesting to see it come back, but also see it uh, somewhat reinvented with some new things um, that are contemporary to today. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. So I told her if she loves the yellow, she should stay with it. Only this time make a slight adjustment to the saturation and tweak the hue just a bit warmer, like a warm gold yellow, which is timeless. And if you are interested in this color as well. I have a few um, re recommendations for you. Two of them are Benjamin Moore and they are both historic colors. If you look at Benjamin Moore historic colors, they are the timeless collection of paint colors. They have been around, you know, for decades and decades and decades and um, not not trendy at all. So one of them is Heppel White Ivory. It's Benjamin Moore HC-36. It is a really warm butter yellow in an uh, ivory lighter tone. 
very neutral as well, but very warm and and um, bright. It's 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 it will not darken the room. In other words, the second one is HC dash thirty, and it's called Philadelphia Cream, and it is just a few shades deeper than the Heppel White Ivory. It is what I would consider a deeper wheat gold yellow. It's beautiful. It has depth to it. And on that color, wood finish furniture pops and it is really, it looks beautiful against that wall color. Um, so those are the two Benjamin Moores. And then I do have two Farrell and Ball colors. The first one is cream, or Pharaoh's cream, number 67. This is a traditional cream color, and it has a touch of warm yellow to it. So if you don't want to go full on yellow, but you want that warmth and sunniness of it, this Pharaoh's cream is that color. The second one is Dorset cream, number 68. This is a darker and it has more yellow in the color than the Pharaoh's cream. It's a really warm gold yellow wall color. Beautiful. And now moving on to the blue carpet. The dark blue carpet paired with um, the yellow walls is a really classic traditional color scheme. Uh, but if you've been looking at this color scheme for 20 years or so, you might want to have an update. And uh, a nice update to that is while staying in the blue color family, you would just go a little bit lighter and a little bit more neutral in the blue with a touch of green. Uh, and also, um, if you do a boucle carpet, which has both cut pile and loop, and it will show texture and dimension because the cut pile acts sort of like a velvet. So it has like that light and dark side to it. And then the loop creates a different texture within the velvet cut pile, if that makes any sense to you. But just know that it really shows texture and dimension. And that really elevates the look and feel of the room. And it's not too flat because paint color... Although the color is beautiful, it still is a flat color unless you do some sort of a, um, oh, I don't know, like a texture or um, a mural painting on top of it or, or something like that. Um, or if you do like stripes, tone on tone stripes, you do a stripe in more of an eggshell and then you do a stripe in like a shiny gloss that can create tone on tone um, texture and still be a monochromatic color. Uh, so uh, with those updates, it will completely change the look and feel of the room while keeping in colors that you're comfortable with and that you feel happy in. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. Let me know. Send me a voicemail. Let me know what you think about that. You can always send me direct messages in Instagram and email. So um, I'm also available there as well. My Instagram is Stephanie with a P-H dot Socha, S-O-C-H-A dot design. That's the Instagram. And email is info at makeanddecorate.com. Let's t do a little chit chat. You know that saying, April showers bring May flowers? Well, it is now April and we have been having a lot of rain. And we expect a lot more rain in this 10-day forecast. So far, the rain has been moderate and peaceful, and uh, it's the kind of rain that you see in romantic movies. I think about the first thing that comes to my mind is the Kiara Knightley version of Pride and Prejudice. And there is this scene where it's raining steadily, and she and Mr. Darcy are outside in the pouring rain 
um, and they're arguing about everything and nothing. It's just uh, one of those classic scenes in the rain, but uh, completely romantic as well. So this is the kind of rain um, that I like. It, it can be soothing and it allows us the reprieve to either curl up with a book or sewing project or even just listening to the sound of the rain coming down. Uh, I, I tend to like that kind of rain. So if it's going to be here for the next 10 days on and off, hopefully it continues to be that kind of rain. All right. I have no new sewing projects except for a cute mug rug that I made for a patron in the handcrafted tier. I made this in a really beautiful Liberty Tanalon fabric uh, on the front and it has a deep blue background with, um, I would say the pattern is the, of the flowers or maybe like a half inch to three quarters of an inch. So a little bit lar larger than their teeny tiny repeats. So they're really beautiful flowers in pinks, yellows, greens, coral. It's so pretty. Uh, so that was a um, fabric on the, on the front. And I used an Essex linen blue fabric on the back and I made an applique detail on the front in a circle where the mug is to be placed. On that Essex uh, linen circle I hand embroidered the word cafe and then um, stitched that on with a uh, machine stitched blanket stitch. And I did no binding so that you could get the full Liberty print focus. <laughs> it's just, um, yeah, it's, it was a really pretty um, mug rug. So I hope that that patron loves it. She has it now, I believe. Um, and um, I also did a quilting pattern of Krista Watson's. It was the wavy line. Uh, it, it Because I was going to do just straight straight horizontal lines across because it was a floral. So sometimes when you um, contrast organic floral patterns with a geometric, it looks really nice. But I, I don't know. I just wasn't liking the idea of the horizontal lines. So that wavy line was perfect. It really, really complemented that flowy print and didn't take away from it. My little Cricut Joy is such a cute little mini cutting machine. This is what I got for a birthday gift. And I have now um, have used it and I've made several cards with uh, insert cards made specific for the Joy machine. It's, it's by Cricut and it sold by all of the big box crafting stores. I got mine from Michael's and they had a huge, like, I mean, it was, I think, uh, 50% off. They're so quick to make. So the one thing about buying these already folded and cut to size cards with the inserts and the envelopes is that you can make a card in literally like five to 10 minutes. Also, in that five to 10 minutes is that you choose a design already designed for that type of a card uh, to be cut on the Cricut Joy. And um, those cards are in the access, Cricut access subscription thing. I didn't want to re-sign up for the Cricut access. So I, you can also purchase these designs for 99 cents. So I did purchase one design and then I thought, Oh my gosh, I'm going to make cards for uh, Mother's Day, for birthdays and a graduation that's coming up. <laughs> I um, went ahead and activated the access for a month and then um, it's set to cancel in uh, in May. So I've got to get all of these card making things done. I've I've made like... Oh, I must have made six or seven cards already. I've just got a few more. I've got to make the wedding card and some other birthday cards. Uh, oh, and on a couple of those card designs, I did a um, combination of a sketch design and then it cut the design. That worked out really nicely too, especially the glitter pens, the Cricut glitter pen. Uh, uh, it, it, it did like a sketch 
um, outline of um, a couple of them were like with cats and um, a little frame around them. Uh, and the sketching really works well in the Cricket Joy. And it adds a, a, a layer element to just having the cardstock cut in a design. So I like the combination of the sketch pens with the cut design on the front of the card. Let's move on to gardening. I finally planted seeds that have to be started indoors. It's my first time. I barely know what I'm doing, but I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. So I do have, I did get um, little trays with the plug trays that go inside of it. I got a heating mat and the style of the trays I got have a nice tall clear dome and there's a little disc of LED lights that fits right on the top of that dome and they all plug into a USB plug uh, and it um, so they've been up for a few days now. I'm hoping I should start seeing some sprouts in about seven days. And we'll see how it goes. I was talking to my hairstylist about this. And she's like, oh, you've, you've just gone all fancy there. And she said, my aunt just tosses the seeds into cardboard cartons and, you know, doesn't have any special lights or anything. And... I said, yes, and she probably knows exactly what she's doing and how to take care of them uh, to nurture them, to germinate and to grow into like beautiful seedlings. But I don't. So I need all the help I can get as far as lighting and um, keeping the, the soil warm because it's still pretty cold here. Uh and in gray, you know, there's there's not been that many super sunshiny days um, here at the end of March and early April. Uh, so <laughs> cross your fingers that that these seeds actually germinate and become little seedlings. Hey there, it's future me. And today is day three of planting the seeds. And I ha see a little teeny tiny sprouts. I took a photo and it's going to be up on the podcast blog page. I'm so excited. I'm so excited that there are teeny tiny sprouts on day three. I, um, yeah, so just wanted to edit this and let you guys know. I have started watching this other YouTube channel. I don't remember the name of it. It is with this British guy. Uh, he has this gorgeous, um, uh, what do you call it? Greenhouse. And the frame is made out of wood and it's a beautiful wood stained finish. Uh, and then all the glass and it's so pretty. And so he was showing how to do plant the seedling. So I learned a few new tricks from him that I'll try maybe, um, after this first batch of seeds that I do, but he um, he did those little four inch pots and he's planted a bunch of seeds. And then when a bunch of seedlings popped up, he took them out of the pot and then he separated them. And then he planted each single one into the plug trays so that uh, you didn't have to waste the little seedlings that you have to thin because I know you have to thin them in order to like let the one you know strong seedling grow into a plant uh, and so I thought that that was pretty brilliant and a really um, frugal way <laughs> to get the most out of the, your seeds. I will put a link to that in the show notes uh, because I cannot remember the name of that channel. <laughs> It, it, so so far it's kind of fun, but I I just have all of this like um, fear and anxiety about these you know if I'm doing everything right, which I just need to like chill because I mean it's dirt and it's a seed and way back you know hundred years ago people didn't have LED lights and heating mats and so forth and so I know that seeds can grow just by 
putting them in soil and giving them daylight, right? <laughs> right. All right, my brother is getting married in October. And we've, um, my mom actually reminded me because I had no clue that um, on their save the date, uh, they had put information about like, you know, hotels and stuff like that. It was just a link to the not.com. So they didn't say go here to like, you know, see all the travel information. And I'm thinking, oh, it's like so far in the future, I got enough time. Well, my mom's like, oh, you better, you better get on reserving, you know, the rooms and stuff. The thing of it is that we have never left Cooper behind before. We have always traveled with him since we've had him from 2015. He's come with us um, and we've rented Airbnbs where we've gone and we really haven't gone like anywhere where, I mean, this was just kind of like to family reunion trips and trips to visit family um, that also have dogs. So we're pretty lucky. And as I started to look into boarding places, they require, obviously, duh, they require that dogs be kennel trained because they will sleep in the, the kennels. I just had a panic in the middle of the night, 3 a.m. I'm in a panic and I'm like uh, searching um, all about this. And then I'm worrying about Cooper because he has ne he, he, the last time he was kennel trained was when he was three, a three month old puppy and earlier when he was in the, the, the shelters, the puppy shelters. And we had him in a crate maybe for like a week or so, but, uh, he just, he just wasn't having it. And, and so he, and he is such a good dog and we, he had like his three obedience classes and he's super smart and he's never really needed a crate. He's, he's, um, knock on wood. He's the best dog we've ever had. He doesn't get onto the counters and, and, and we can leave food. My husband left a bag of tortilla chips on the floor in the living room went to work, came back. I saw that and I'm looking at Cooper and I was like, you are the best dog in the whole wide world. Do you know that? <laughs> he didn't even try to get into that bag and he loves tortilla chips. So that's what I'm saying. Like he just really doesn't require a crate <laughs> and that would be super tra traumatizing to him. So I worried about that. And then I started looking at Airbnbs in, um, the area. It's going to be in Iowa. Uh, and I found one that accepts pets. Actually, Iowa has quite a few Airbnbs that accept pets. So uh, if you want to travel to a pet-friendly state, Iowa would be one of those. And uh, so we're all set now. I can breathe easy and I can know that Cooper is not going to be traumatized. He's going again with us on a road trip and the Airbnb house is two minutes from the church. So we can come back and hang out with him in between the ceremony and the reu uh, reunion, pff, the reception. Uh, and it's going to be all good. Oh, what a relief. And then the other plus to this is that the owners just completely renovated this unit. All right, but we're looking forward to this in October. Let's just be done with the wedding business here. Well, actually, go back. Now I'm thinking, what do I wear to this wedding now? I kind of want to make an outfit. If it doesn't work out, I'll have time to buy something closer to the date. But here's what I came up with. And I searched like every indie pattern company out there with extended sizes. <laughs> I had, I guess I had this certain thing in mind because I want to be comfortable, but I also want to look dressy enough. It's not a super formal wedding. So it's one of those in between like a garden type of dress wear. I think the ceremony is at two in the afternoon. I, I still am not completely set on this, but I did find this simplicity. It's 2917 dress and tunic pattern. 
It's a princess seamed dress and it has cap sleeves and a sweetheart neckline. And, and the other thing is that I'm using Liberty Tanalon fabric. I'm really excited about this because I have not made anything clothing wise in Tanalon. So this silhouette would look really nice with that fabric and be really beautiful and drapey. And that time of the year is also iffy with the weather. It could be still sort of summer weather or it could have already moved into an early fall where it's a little chilly. With that in mind, I also want to make the fuller cardigan, the short one by Cashmereette. And uh, they have pictured that ca short cardigan with um, a, a dress with like kind of a full skirt and it looks really cute. So that right now is my plan. I've also been looking at, well, I have it actually. I have the Megan Nielsen Waddle Curve Bias A-Line Skirt. I couldn't find the right top for it. Uh, and that simplicity pattern has a top with the cap sleeve. So you can either make the top and then there's a separate skirt in the same pattern or you can make the entire dress. So I'll have to look at that more closely when I get the pattern. It's, it should be getting here any day now. All right, let's get into the main topic of Liberty Fabrics. By now, if you have been sewing for any length of time, you probably have heard about Liberty Tanalon Fabrics. And you probably have thought what is the deal with Liberty Fabrics? I was trying to do that Seinfeld voice, by the way, <laughs> if you're old enough to remember. What is the deal? Well, let's find out what the deal is. Here's a bit of history. It all began with Arthur Lazenby Liberty, who founded Liberty in 1885. Arthur was the son of a draper, and he had an appreciation for skilled craftsmanship. He had a bunch of artist friends, and he told them that if he had his own shop, he would change the look of fashion in dress and decoration. And that is exactly what he did. He opened the Liberty Shop on Regent Street in London in 1885. And the shop is still there and continues to thrive. And they sell, I mean, lots of things. They sell um, home deck, decorative items and clothing, as well as fabrics. In the Liberty Shop's early years, it was filled with objects imported from the Far East, rugs from India, silk from China, Japanese papers for walls, wall coverings, and in the 1880s, Liberty commissioned designs from several leading artists of the day. And these designs gained renowned influence and they popularized the Art Nouveau style because that was the style of the day. Liberty began calling their fabrics Liberty Art Fabrics to kind of distinguish them as superior to the run-of-the-mill commercially manufactured fabrics. Many Liberty fabrics were printed with Art Nouveau designs by these commissioned artists. In Italy, they called this fabric Style Liberty, which I guess is an interpretation to Art Nouveau style. The first fabrics were mostly silks. And then they expanded to linen and cotton. Carpets and wallpapers were um, other things that they did Art Nouveau patterns on. The Tana Lawn fabrics came around in the late 1910s, and it's named after Lake Tana in East Africa. This is the place where a special type of cotton plant with a very long fiber that produced very fine thread or fabric, hence Tana Lawn. Uh, this fabric became Liberty's best-selling fabric. 
So now let's back up and find out what is cotton lawn fabric. Because tana lawn is not just, uh, well, tana is, but lawn fabric is not just Liberty Fabric. Other the companies make lawn fabric. It's a type of a cotton fabric. There's also different other fibers that um, are also considered lawn, like a batiste. But we're going to focus on cotton. Uh, so cotton lawn fabric is a type of cotton fabric with a high thread count, and it provides it a silky texture, and it's very lightweight. Uh, so due to the way it is woven, lawn cloth is usually semi-transparent and it provides the fabric with almost a sheer appearance. Um, I would call it maybe like semi-sheer. Lawn cloth is relatively lightweight and makes it a popular fabric for spring and summer garments and now also quilts. This type of fabric was first produced in France in the city of Lawn, hence Lawn Fabrics. Uh, and it was made from linen until cotton was imported from India, which is interesting. Liberty introduced, okay, wait, so that's the, that's finishing up with Lawn Fabric. And now you know what Tana Lawn Fabric is. Only Liberty has the Tana Lawn Fabric, in other words. Okay, so now we're going to fast forward a bit and talk about Lazenby cotton. Liberty introduced Lazenby cotton fabric in 2017. It's named after the founder, Arthur Lazenby Liberty, and it's designed for quilters. It's a little heavier than Tana Lawn, and it makes it perfect for patchwork quilting and home deck like pillows. And now you're going to probably wonder, who designs Liberty Fabrics today? Well, first of all, Liberty has an archive of over 50,000 prints from the 1880s through today. Designers were first contracted by Liberty to design patterns for Liberty Fabric up until 1952. In 1952, Liberty brought the fabric design in-house, and they opened the Liberty Design Studio in Soho, London. Today, there are 15 artists that work on designs 18 months in advance, and they are like top, top secret. The artists have different areas of specialty in hand drawing, painting, water, watercolor, oil, pen and ink designs. Each print starts out that way, but then moves on to the current technology of printing their designs. Each print is named with a story behind it, and I love this. I really love finding out what the stories are behind uh, a pattern, a print name, and a collection. It could be a location visited or named after artists or even some named after royalty. Uh, digital printing now is able to show the artwork of the artist from the original to the fabric. For instance, watercolor. Digital printing can really show a, the watercolor features from how it was painted on the paper and print it pretty much identically onto the fabric. It's amazing. Sometimes technology is really cool. All right, so where is this Liberty fabric made? Up until several years ago, it was made in the UK. And in fact, not far from where Kate, from The Last Homely House, the YouTube channel, where she lives. If you listen to that episode I had Kate on, um, I want to say it was episode 54. Uh, but she talked about uh, that Liberty uh, Mill being very, not very far from her. And she was able to, um, to go there and buy, I don't know if they would call it dead stock or also things that were maybe um, flawed in the printing process, that sort of thing, um, probably at a really good price too. But now it is made in Italy. And it's um, 
in Co- Cuomo, Italy, near Lake Cuomo. Lake <laughs> Cuomo. Uh, so the types of Liberty fabrics: Tana lawn, we talked about. Lazenby quilt cotton, we talked about. And they also have a lot of apparel fabrics. They have silk, linen, knit, and um, of course the Tana lawn cotton is used for apparel. They also have home deck fabrics. They have velvets and linen, or or mostly, and probably some silks, but really it's mostly velvet and linen um, for their home deck fabrics and their their heavier home deck weight fabrics as well. So you would definitely not want to use the home deck velvet or linen fabrics in, in quilting. You would certainly be able to use them on pillows and so forth. However, their home deck fabrics are very pricey. Um, They are geared toward the luxe um, industry. How I've been really lucky, though, to be able to work with those uh, in interior design. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Let's get into the two cottons that we are most interested in for our projects. And let's take a closer look at Tana Lawn. It's lightweight, silky, and um, there's beautiful prints and colors. Uh, Clothing will have a beautiful drape, like dresses and blouses, shirts, skirts. All are beautiful with the tan alon. Uh, Quilting, it's really ideal for English paper piecing. Because of the lightweight and thin nature of the fabric, it folds very nicely around the templates and it stitches well. The small print patterns also work well with both English paper piecing and patchwork quilting. Patchwork, uh, sewing with Tanalon is an adjustment from regular quilting fabrics. Because it's really thin and silky, it means that it can get ripply and puckered easily. You know, if it, if it feels like silk, it sort of can act a little bit like silk where it's a little slippery and it's thin, so it can easily pucker. Uh, but don't let that scare you um, because it's it's just kind of just getting used to the hand of Tanalon versus the um, weight in hand of uh, quilting fabrics. It's just the adjustment. Um, and then you'll do fine. If your sewing machine has a dual feed feature, I would definitely use that when sewing with Tanalon. And also uh, a walking foot would certainly help as well because it'll pull the top and the bottom layers through evenly. Another thing that will help when sewing Tanalon is to press the fabric before you sew and spray it with a starch or a, a spray like Flatter or Mary Ellen's Best Press and it will really add body and crispness to the fabric and really make it um, pretty easy to, to sew with. It's ideal to piece Tana Lawn with only Tana Lawn. Many quilt aficionados will say to use the same fiber of fabric and the same weight of fabric in quilt piecing. Yeah, in a perfect world, maybe. But in my world, <laughs> I do mix them. I mix fabric weights to a degree. Uh, so, for instance, I've I've mixed Tanalon with Art Gallery Pure Solids. They have a similar silky feel to it. They're still a little bit weightier than Tana, but they're pretty close um, to to texture feel. And um, I've also mixed it with other lawns like. Kaufman Fabrics has a beautiful lawn fabric um, and uh, mix it with other quilting fabrics like K. Facet, Tula Pink, Anna Maria Horner, Katerina Rochella. It just, uh, you know, mixes well with those types of fabrics and it makes a really nice quilt binding, especially because it's so wide it's um it's about 55 you have about 55 inches of usable fabric in a tanalon fabric because it comes it's as it's about 56 inches wide off the bolt 
Another good use of tanalon are in quilt backings. Again, at the wide width of the 55 inches of usable fabric width, uh, for smaller quilts, you'd only need a single width of this fabric for quilt backing. And here's another tip too. Let's just say you are just um, a few inches short of having that extra fabric for long arm quilting. You can stitch sides to the Tanalon fabric. Now this is only if that Tanalon backing covers your quilt, but then you just don't have enough for the four inches on each side. That's where this really works. And I've done this before <laughs> and it saves a lot of money uh, than to have to order double the amount of fabric to make those extra seams of the Tanalon fabric. There are also home deck uses for the Tanalon fabric. One of them being shower curtains. I do have Tanalon fabric I ordered last year specifically for uh, my upstairs uh, bathroom for the shower curtain. I'm really excited. I cannot wait to get some time to make that. Uh, it will make a beautiful shower curtain. Of course, you'll have the the, the liner shower curtain behind it, uh, but it just drapes so beautifully. And um, yeah, it will make a great shower curtain. Even some, some draperies um, it can work for. I mean, I know a lot of the patterns are very tiny, but some of their patterns, they do have large repeats, like the Tresco. Um, that's a beautiful pattern that would make gorgeous drapery panels. And uh, pillows, throws, bedding. Honestly, like the sky's the limit with Tana Lawn. It's just, <laughs> it's just how much budget you have to work with because this fabric is um, pricey. It kind of um, averages around um, 39 to 40 plus dollars a yard uh, and um, it partly because it is wider than your typical 43 inch wide quilt width fabrics but the other thing is that specific tana lawn cotton fiber uh, so you're paying for that luxe quality of the tana lawn fabric uh, but I am like the Tanalon sales finder queen. I have to tell you, I will search it out. And actually, now more than ever, I see it um, everywhere. And in fact, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about this yet, but it is available to order on Joanne Fabrics online. And eventually, it will make its way into their stores. And it is at a lower price point than the independent quilt shops. Uh, they're selling it at around $36 a yard, which, you know, it does save money. And it still is the Tana Lawn by Liberty. Uh, I guess Liberty just decided to expand because it has just, it's like, popular worldwide this fabric is uh, and I have ordered it from fabric.com and fabric.com usually um, just has kind of like the um, what I would consider like the um, overstock uh, supply of Liberty but I don't know I think that they may be getting um, newer Liberty fabrics as well, because now they have a ton of Liberty fabrics. And occasionally, they will have sales on there. In fact, this um, dress or skirt that I want to make for the wedding, um, they re fabric.com recently had a sale, it was like half off for like one day. <laughs> and I jumped on it. Uh, I and and I got uh, three and a half yards for like $18 a yard. That's just like unheard of. But I mean, I, I've got to look for these sales because 
um, you know, when you're making clothing and you need three to four yards of fabric, that really adds up at $40 a yard. So, um, yeah, there's ways to source this Liberty Tana lawn to where you could, you know, afford it to make um, some projects. I usually order uh, my Tana lawn quilting fabrics from um, Duckadilly. Uh, I've mentioned it a few times, and it's a it's a just a Liberty Tana Lawn Fabric Studio in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and the owner Leslie is great. She is so wonderful, and I love to support her shop. So when I do, uh, you know, quilting um, fabrics, smaller like she has really great little bundles of um, smaller sized fabrics. Um, she will have, I've talked about this as well, she will have remnant sales where the fabric is also around 40 uh, to 50% off. So you just have to get on her email list. And I, I, that's how I really get my larger yardage amounts of Liberty fabric. <laughs> um, so anyway, you can, you can find Liberty Tana Lawn um, in a price point um, that fits your budget. Okay, let's move on to Lazenby cotton. This cotton is quilt weight. It's 44 inches wide, which gives you 43 inches of usable fabric width, 100% cotton, and Liberty Prints and Quilting Collections uh, with authorized distributor Riley Blake Designs. So that who that is who distributes the Liberty Lazenby Cotton. I just received the most recent collection in fat, a Fat Quarter bundle, and it is called Flower Show Midnight Gar- Garden. It really it was released uh, towards the end of February, and uh, this Midnight Garden color palette is gorgeous it is all of my favorite colors it has um all these shades of blues and of course it's called flower show so they're all florals uh blues and then there are some purples and then there are multicolor prints well they're all kind of multicolor prints there's a couple of just two two color prints um, but the the prints are all in this one color palette of the collection, which is basically blues, pinks, purples, creams, and greens. Um, it's so beautiful. And um, the story with this collection is that it celebrates the best in show uh, flower shows in England. And it brings together botanical designs from across Liberty's iconic print archive, drawing inspiration from the glory and tradition of classic British flower shows. The collection features diverse flower forms united in a cacophony of color, illustrating Liberty's rich heritage of floral design. Flower Show Midnight Garden transports us to a magical moonlit garden strung with lanterns where jewel plum purples and cool blues reflect the dappling of light among the trees. The result is a rich and enigmatic palette guaranteed to bring any crafting project into full bloom. The collection is traditionally screen printed on Lazenby cotton, a base specifically developed for quilting and craft projects. And I have a link to that collection in the show notes. And what I just read, this um, description of this collection is from the um, Riley Blake um, uh, website, and I will have a link to that as well. And looking forward to summer, they have another collection that releases around the end of June, and it's called the Riviera Collection. It Oh, also, I want to say that the Lazenby Quilt Cotton is priced just like other quilt shop quality cottons. So it's um, around like $12 a yard, uh, so very much more affordable than the Tana Lawn. And they pull from their archive. It's like there's there's 
nothing inferior about these quilt cottons. In fact, they're even better because you don't have to worry about the um, thin, silky nature of the Tana lawn if you really just want to um, quilt with the same quilting weight that you're used to. Uh, so let's talk about, okay, so the Riviera Collection releases at the end of June. This collection was hand-painted by the Liberty Studio in 1991, echoing memorable style of graphic-inspired 1950s patterns. Sea life exudes e effortless nautical charm. The eclectic pastiche of fla uh, silhouette flowers, boats, fish, shells, and butterflies almost resembles lino-cut prints while transporting us to a magical summer seascape. That also is the description from Riley Blake website. So here's my <laughs> description. Um, one of the patterns is called Adventure Coast, and it is what I would consider their statement print. So it's a larger um, repeat print. And to me, it looks sort of like a twall. And the um, pictorial of this uh, print is a coastal village on a waterfront. It's really beautiful. There are three colorways of this collection, and they're all beautiful. Uh, there's a, They have a stripe, which is always fantastic with um, any collection, actually. I just love stripes. Uh, there's another pattern with colorful beach huts, and they're they're the the beach huts are like these beautiful colors. They're they're not all like one color. They're they're blue and yellow and red and so forth. Uh, and you probably have seen these in some of the um, BBC shows, movies, uh, masterpiece classics, and so forth. Um, but they they are in places like Dorset and Norfolk uh, around the beaches. And actually, they're actually quite expensive to <laughs> to lease or to buy, I guess. I don't know. There's a whole thing. I watched um, something, some sort of a documentary, but it is like some of them, I mean, 25,000 pounds is a low price because they go up in the hundreds of thousands. It's, it's kind of like a thing there. Uh, so I guess you're lucky if you actually have um, a beach hut on the beach in the UK. There's uh, other patterns that have like small little sailboats on them and you can do some really great projects with this collection for your sunroom or your porch. Um, you know, outdoor pillows, well, that you could, you either would fill those um, pillows with um, outdoor fillers or foam because um, this is not outdoor fabric. So you would have to bring them in if it rains, of course. But, I mean, it's almost like irresistible to, to make outdoor pillows or something. Um, uh, and at the least, uh, placemats that you can use um, if you have uh, dining out outdoors on a patio or a deck. Uh, this collection would just be so beautiful for that. Again, table linens, quilts, tote bags, you name it. So this one's going to come out uh, end of June. Be looking for Riviera. And uh, yeah, so I I just wanted to focus mainly on the two cottons, the Tana Lawn and the Lazenby Cotton um, with this Liberty episode and kind of give you some ideas and how you can use them. Uh, and I just, um, in conclusion, uh, just a little bit more information about Liberty Fabrics is that it has a 140 year history. It's internationally recognized as a leader in print design and textile innovation. The in-house design team continues to create, to create new and original prints each season. The Liberty Fabrics business is the biggest contributor to the Liberty Group. It's been growing 37% um, in stores and online, which is really huge. Uh, and you can kind of see that with 
more and more access to Liberty Fabrics here. Um, just like I said earlier with Joanne Fabrics now um, distributing and selling uh, Tana Lawn online and soon in their stores. Um, and then there is a quote that I have by Mary Ann Dunkley, who is the design director of Liberty Fabrics. And this is from uh, an article interview she did with Forbes in 2019. The evolution comes through the way we innovate those traditional methods with state-of-the-art technology that allows us to meet the demands of our international customer base. Liberty Fabrics is constantly evolving with technologies in printing and with collaborations with emerging talent like Richard Quinn and with brands like Christian Louboutin. Oh, I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> Christian Lou Bouton, Paul Smith, and Nike. Working with brands in this way continuously opens my eyes to the endless ways of reinventing the Liberty print, whilst also highlighting its timelessness as a style genre. So that comes from Mary Ann Dunkley, design director, Liberty Fabrics. Here are my final thoughts on Liberty Fabrics. My first experience with Liberty Fabrics was with their luxury home deck line with Scalamandre. I did a beautiful Roman shade in a paisley cotton print, and the, that cotton was much more like a canvas twill weight, uh, much heavier than quilt weight fabric. Uh, I also worked with William Morris Textiles, uh, the Strawberry Thief is a favorite pattern of mine, and it really wasn't until around 2015 that I learned about Liberty Tanalon. Don't ask me why, but <laughs> that's, uh, that's when I really uh, discovered the Tanalon fabric uh, and saw quilters using it in their quilts, and my mind was blown, and since then I have not turned back. I've mentioned it many times, and I just mentioned it earlier in the episode, but I'm going to mention it again. And, and by the way, uh, Ducka Dilly does not uh, sponsor me in any way, shape, or form. Um, but actually, it would be really nice. Uh, favorite online uh, Liberty Tanalon shop is Ducka Dilly. I've also ordered directly from the Liberty of London website in London. They do... Uh, take orders and you kind of like switch to the United States um, website so you can see the pricing in dollars versus pounds. Uh, and um, well, before the pandemic, it really didn't take that long for them to ship the orders to you. Uh, but from their website, uh, they have some exclusive patterns and colorways to their shop that you won't find in other shops. I think this is how... Uh, they support the independent uh, quilt and apparel shops because Ducka Dilly will have um, certain prints in colorways exclusive only to their shop. I think that's really special and I think it's smart to do it that way because it encourages us to um, order those from those shops because they're not going to be available at the big box stores. Um, they, they just won't be. I don't think so. Um, so that's great. Yeah. And so continuing with my experience with Liberty Fabric, in 2017, when they introduced their Lazenby Cotton, I was just so thrilled and excited um, because the price point is just so much easier on the pocketbook, right? Yeah. And it's the same uh, fabric weight as other quilt shop quality fabrics. And I just received a fat quarter bundle from their latest flower show, Midnight Garden. I am holding it in my hot little hands right now. Oh, it is just beautiful it's it's just I just can't even describe it but <laughs> it's 
If you thought Liberty fabrics were too traditional, stuffy, and old-fashioned, take another look and try both the Tanalon and the Lazenby cotton. For me, Liberty fabrics are really special, and uh, I, I just will always cherish them as being special, just like more the most special fabrics in my fabric stash collection. I think I just will always um, be collecting Liberty fabrics throughout throughout my lifetime. I also love to use them as often as I can and not keeping them too precious not to use. I know this is really hard, especially <laughs> especially with the Tanalon because it is so much of an investment. But um, uh, through the years, I've just learned you got to use it because um, I love seeing it. You will love seeing the pattern of Liberty Tanalon or the quilting fabrics in everything that you make, and then to just stash them in a dark closet. And also, seeing Liberty fabrics just brings me so much joy in both sewing with them and enjoying the completed product projects that I've made from them. And I really, <laughs> I I have mostly sewn with Liberty Tanalon for commission projects for other people. But in the last few years, I've really started to collect them, like I said, in those remnant sales and small bundles and, and using them in my own projects. You know, there's this mindset and I had it for a little while because of how expensive the fabric is and that almost like an unworthiness to use those fabrics for yourself. And I'm not even sure that's the right term, but hopefully you get what I'm trying to convey here in that maybe too indulgent. That's what I mean. Like, it's just too self-indulgent to use those for myself. Well, not any longer. I think that you should self-indulge in some of these fabrics for yourself, whether you make a top or a skirt or um, even a little EPP project. Just indulge yourself with some of these, especially if you really like the patterns um, of the Liberty um, fabrics. And also now you don't even have to worry about self-indulgence with their Lazenby cotton. <laughs> so indulge all you want with those guilt-free. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode all about Liberty fabrics. Definitely let me know if you have any questions, comments, or anything. Um, and I want to share uh, my research sources for this episode. I did a ton of research and reading. Um, in addition to, <laughs> I've been doing a ton of reading about Liberty Fabrics. I have several Liberty books. Um, so here are my resources. The Liberty Design Book by Barbara Morris. I have links to all of these books on the show notes on the podcast blog page. Quilting with Liberty. This book is by Jenny Smith, and it's a more recent book. The Liberty Design book by Barbara Morris is back from 1989. Uh, the Riley Blake website, the Liberty website, and the Forbes article featuring Mary Ann Dunkley, design director of Liberty Fabrics, published May 30th, 2019. I wish you happy sewing, clothing, bags, quilts, pillows, and more with your Liberty Fabrics. Thank you for listening to my podcast. Don't forget to leave me a voicemail with your question or comment. It's so much fun to receive these from you guys. And remember, take some time to make and decorate for yourself. Bye-bye. If you would like a bonus episode every month, become a patron and support the Make and Decorate podcast show at my Patreon page, Make and Decorate. 
For extended show notes with links and photos to what we've talked about, visit my podcast blog at makeanddecorate.com. And remember to take some time for yourself to be creative. Bye-bye.